my fiery kittens, it's Firecats3 here, and today I'm doing a much more relaxed, calming video. The videos where I redesign one of my old characters from the past. I really do enjoy this series, and it, I know it doesn't take as much research or knowledge to do it, but I just like it. It's a nice calming effect for me, and I hope that you guys enjoy it too. So, today's character we're gonna redesign, our victim, is Guardian Darkness. Now, I made Guardian Darkness, or GD for short, when I was a brony. When Generation 4 started, I was one of those lovely, lovely people who fell in love with the show and started calling themselves a brony. And yes, I like the term brony. I know some people like Pegasister for girl bronies, but I just like the term brony, period. So, I identify as a brony, not a Pegasister. Just, just gonna put that out there. <laughs> for anyone who wants to be like, you're a Pegasister, not a brony, I'm like, no, I, I, I like brony, the term brony better. Um, <laughs> me rambling about my preferences when it comes to My Little Pony, a show meant for very, very young girls. <laughs> yep, yep. I am not a weirdo. I am not a weirdo in my early 20s going, yes, My Little Pony. That is what the peak of television. <laughs> okay, me, me talking myself into a corner. Let's, let's continue on with uh, GD's story. So, GD was my very first pony OC, and I made her using the Pony Maker on DeviantArt. Link will be in the description. And when I made GD, uh, I really was just making a pony character, hence the name is so weird, Guardian Darkness. I thought they had to have weird names and I wanted to make her related to my series The Darkness somehow, so I was like, Guardian Darkness, that's how we're gonna do it. That's how you're gonna relate it back to Firecats 3. Obviously. That was a silly reasoning, and now her name kind of is a crazy name to have for a character, but hence the reason I like to just say GD. Um, so GD, when I made her, I made her a, a pony, and I didn't really have a direct idea of what she was going to be. However, at that time, I was also RPGing with my friend Case at the time, and uh, she and I kind of kind of intertwined some characters together with her, just because Case was also into My Little Pony. Crazy, right? We all were so into My Little Pony. Um, but we both had pony characters and we were meshing with them and stuff like that, and I still really didn't have an idea. And I was kind of also working on my series, The Darkness, and I was specifically working on season two of it because I had finished season one, and I, that was kind of all my ideas. I know, it's really sad, but uh, at that point in time, I had only really plotted out one season for uh, The Darkness, and please, don't make fun of me, I was young. <laughs> I was young. This was my idea of how to do creative writing. It was bad. It was so bad. I go back and I read it and I just cringe. <laughs> oh, if I ever do a live stream and people make me watch my old videos, I'm just gonna be like bright red laughing going, Oh, why are you making me do this? Oh no, I'm gonna become the oh, Ashley. My channel is gonna be watching cringy videos of my past. Okay. <laughs> Ramblings of a crazy person who wants to actually do stuff on her Twitch channel. Um, as I was saying, now my brain works, uh, <laughs> Guardian Darkness, or GD. GD was kind of, I wanted to put her in to my Darkness series, and I didn't know really what to do with her. I, I was on season two, I didn't really know what season two was going to be like, so... I decided that the best thing to do with her was to make her uh, a communication uh, type of thing. Like, uh, I don't know how else to explain it. It was 
biologically engineered creature in which that it would be like shape-shifted to the creatures of the planet it was a part of, but it would have like telekinesic powers or like, you know how like Spike has that fire that like they can teleport scrolls through his fire and stuff, like something like that, where they were able to retrieve messages from different planets that were like across the galaxy. And that was my original idea for her, but then that meant that I had to make a whole bunch of different ones of her, just in every type of style, every type of creature type of thing. And thinking of it now, I think it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Specifically, it's a ridiculous idea. I like the idea of her still being an engineered creature, and you'll find out when I find that out when I get to the redesign and what I chose to do there. But yeah, her original idea was to be this creature that was gonna like live forever that was just designed to communicate between the planets after the darkness had all come and destroyed stuff and you know, now they wanted to have a plan where they had a plan to motion and GD would have this failsafe for the plan. <laughs> it was very complicated, very ridiculous. I was young, I didn't know how to write good. <laughs> I don't know how to speak good either. <laughs> but I am learning and I am trying and now I have a folder, or not folder, a binder of ideas and stuff that I write down and I keep it in that binder so I can remember things. So let's get into the actual redesigning of this character because I think I've rambled on enough about her past. So when I decided to redesign GD, I had to think of what I wanted to do with her. And at that point, I realized that I really liked the idea of her being a creature created in order to basically be the technology of the leaders of planets, etc. So I kind of, in my mind, I was like, okay, where is this in my timeline, etc, etc. Because I have a timeline now, I have a whole of things I have where everywhere connects. Um, but in the timeline, this is the more advanced era of my timeline. This is like basically the futuristic era. So she'd be in the futuristic era type. She's the start of it. And I decided that I'll just make her a robot because robots are so much easier to explain in like science fiction and stuff. Just, you know, when we get older, we're gonna have science and we're gonna have robots and I already have a Roma character named Rob, and Rob is supposed to be strictly from the future, and not just from the future, but from the advanced future. Alright, she is supposed to be like the really the newest model of robotics. So I wanted GD to definitely be the earlier model, the model that's like less advanced, less crazy, stuff like that. So when does De designing GD, I decided I needed to make a blueprint or just, you know, a reference sheet for myself to go back to to see exactly what I wanted on her and what things she was capable of. So, in GD's design, and specifically in the, the picture you're seeing me speed, <laughs> speed draw right now, I made a blueprint as the background for the picture. So, in her blueprints, she has a few things different from Rob, because Rob is supposed to be a uh, servant type, not really servant, but like, not a, not a battle robot, not a robot that's meant for like the higher ups. It's supposed to be like the cheaper robot, but still the advanced robot, <laughs> if that makes all sense. So I took Rob's specs and I just kind of shrunk some of them. So Rob can hear up to 25 miles away, but GD can only hear up to 15 miles away. And Rob goes the speed of 200 miles per hour. Uh, GD can only go 150. That's like how I did it. So after I decided all that, I also kind of wanted to change a few things. I wanted to keep them the same. Like I really liked the mouse-like plug tail that was just like a giant plug because obviously the robots are going to have a lot of energy that they have to take out. So lot of electricity to run them, so obviously that plug. So I made GD's plug a little more square, as though smaller and square, because I wanted hers to have like a shorter 
battery span than Rob. Again, Rob's would be more advanced, so Rob has the bigger one and has a better charging speed. GD doesn't really have a great charging speed. <laughs> I then also changed how her model is. So Rob has a actual barcode that they can scan to see the models and see all the specs and get all the blueprints. GD just has a number across her stomach. And of course it says 001 because she's the first model. Um, then I was like, okay, so now I've got all that, but the other things I want to add. So I kept the on off switch in the center of her forehead like Rob. It's just a little button off on type thing. And I put it in the center of the face because that's where you're most aware of everything. There's no point in time where you're not looking and you can't tell that someone's about to touch your face. So it's very hard for someone to touch your face without knowing. And I kept the ears because I thought the ears were so adorable because they matched the tail and they were like mouse-like and I just, I don't know, I just liked it. I believe those ears came, <laughs> were specifically inspired by Chobits, which is like one of my favorite animes. I, I, it's so old, but it's so adorable. The characters are just adorable looking. So I think that the, you can see a little bit of Chobit in there in the ears specifically. I wanted them to be cute, but I, I made them pointing to be different from Chobit. <laughs> uh, so that was made. I also decided that uh, GD needed to be removable. Her parts needed to be removable because she, even though she was a first edition, very first model, uh, she needed to be updated and upgraded whenever possible. So I put joints across all her body, body parts. So you can remove basically anything on her. You can remove her toes, so you can remove her legs, you can remove her arms, you can remove her hands, etc. And I thought that was a smart idea, just so she can be updated and upgraded. I kept the eye design the same. Didn't really think that needed to change. And the only thing I really added to her feet, more me metallic than Rob's. Rob's are actually like uh, feet. Uh, GD's got like paws <laughs> as her feet, and I just did that because I wanted it to look cuter. Honestly, I, I felt like it was just an easier design than to keep drawing feet, and I thought it was cute. That's like my whole rationale for that. So, yeah. Uh, and then finally I gave her an owner tag, a necklace that has a little circle in it that has all the information of who owns her, what model she is, and stuff like that. And I thought that would be a good... Thing to have as opposed to having the barcode on her because again it's supposed to be less advanced so I feel like they have to actually have a physical thing they put on her to say this is what I own <laughs> all right so after officially creating GD design I then had to go into coloring her now coloring her was a little bit hard uh, but it was also easy because last Thanksgiving <laughs> I had accidentally redesigned her. I did not remember this when I decided to redesign her now uh, until I was looking for colors and for pictures of her and I found this picture. I was like, oh shoot, I did kind of already redesign her. So back in Thanksgiving, I had redesigned her as an elf character because I thought she would look really cute as an elf character. However, she's not an elf character. She's I'm sticking with the robot. I like the robot better because it has it makes sense, but the nice thing about it was that I could take from it. So I took the green skin from it to make it a green metal. I really liked that green color and I think it matches her best when she's green. I did decide to keep GD's hair still red and black because, I don't know, I kind of miss the edginess of some characters I have. I don't really do red and black as much as I used to. So I decided to keep it. I really like the hair. I love the poof to the side it has where it's all on one side. I don't know. I think her hair is great. So I kept it red and black. Uh, and I made her skin a light green that's metallic and that's why it shines. It's a metal. Uh, I did decide that her dress was going to stay that pink color because it's such a cute dress. I don't know, have any other arguments for it. It's really cute. And in her original pony design, her muzzle and hooves were that color. So I decided that, you know what? 
I really like the color with the green. I'm gonna keep it and I put it in her dress. Of course, I gave her a jacket over the desk because for whatever reason, I really like vestual jackets. I really like jackets. I don't know why, but I love giving characters them. So I thought it made her look cool. It was on her original design for GD as a pony. She did have that jacket, but it was closed. So I just now, it's now open. <laughs> uh, I personally hate one color dresses. So I gave her a belt to, you know, cut out that crazy color dress thing, that one color dress. Uh, and finally I gave her boots because I felt like that would be the easiest for her big feet would be uh, boots. And the reason she has uh, black little like cleft things on her arm are because without them I felt like there was too much green. I just wanted to chop off some of the <laughs> green on her. Um, from there, I decided that I didn't want to put pink into her robotic features because the pink was in Rob's and Rob's was like white and pink and I, I felt like it was too much, it would be too much like Rob then if I did pink and stuff. And I also had a pink dress and I felt like it would kind of clash with the pink dress and ugh, I just couldn't. So instead, I made all her little buttons and stuff a very nice purple that matches her purple eyes. <laughs> and I made the inside of her ears a deep blue. I thought that they kind of matched very well. I thought it was very pretty. Um, and of course, some other little things that I did for detail. Um, on her hand is a, looks like the power button on like your computer and stuff, the little circle and the line, uh, that's where all her magnetism kind of comes out in her hand. Then really it's like a circle, this time I was like, I'm gonna make it funny and make it look like a power sign. You know, <laughs> everyone knows what that is. I don't have to explain it any further. Uh, GD, the inside of her mouth is great because she's a robot, so she doesn't have blood, so she wouldn't have red mouth. <laughs> Hence why she's got a gray mouth on the inside. Uh, her eyes obviously don't have the pupil, the black pupils on the inside because they're like a, a camera. Um, and she's robotic, so I thought that looked more robotic is if it just had the one like swipe of light shining on it and the rest it kind of was very flat. It didn't feel like a real person's eye. Uh, I also because what I really liked, uh, some little details that I really liked on her redesign from Thanksgiving was that she had this sparkle type of glow to her freckles. They were white. So in her original uh, pony design, she had three white freckles on her face. Like Applejack has the freckles, so she would have three white freckles too. And I really liked that, so when I redesigned her at Thanksgiving, I decided to make those sparkly, so she had like a whole bunch of freckles that were like sparkly. And I liked that, but it didn't make sense on the robot to give her freckles. So I made her um, face extremely shiny on the cheeks. So it's basically this really sparkly glitter. And I'm taking it as like, that's the makeup she puts on her face every day. Cause in my mind, when remaking her, she is owned by Murrah's royal family. And she became best friends with the daughter, which is Nerva, Nerva, I can't say it. It's heaven backwards. She is the daughter and the, those, she kind of grew up being the nanny for the daughter and you know, GD doesn't have a grow up cycle. She's just forever a robot. So she kind of took care of the princess and um, the princess is the one who's like, oh, you look so pretty with sparkles all over her face. So she always puts sparkles on her face to look more friendly, to be kind of happy, kind of lucky. Um, yeah, that's kind of all her design. Uh, her new background is pretty cool in my opinion. So let me just talk a little bit about her background. Uh, so now, as I said, she's a, she's the robot for the head, the Marine uh, Castle Royal Family, the head of that planet. And 
she's just a robot for them strictly. However, uh, she is so advanced that she can connect to any technology any other planet has. So there's like a special little uh, thing that's given to all planets that has a way to, it looks very non-discreet, it's like a little screen and they can send a message directly to her and then we go straight to Mura. It is their fail safe for if the darkness ever comes back, she can send out a mass panic message or she can receive a mass panic message. So that's kind of how she is, but she's specifically just for Mura. Um, she can't transform anymore. And the whole personality she has is um, kind of created thanks to the princess. The princess and her become kind of like best friends in a sense. Even though she basically raises the princess, she becomes kind of very close to her. She's the closest confidant and she learns about how to act real and not robotic. And she kind of has a few stages in her where she's a little bit rebellious, where she doesn't really want to be different anymore. And I just, you know, I like that idea that she's very duty bound, but whenever she leaves and talks to other people, she acts as though uh, she's not a robot, even though she is one. And she tries to, to, the people she surrounds herself with are people who treat her as another living creature and not as a servant robot. So, I thought that's good. I mean, it's gonna tie into Rob's story later, but again, that's a secret because I want Rob to kinda get her own little thing. Um, and that's it. That's all I can tell you about her because I've already kind of spoiled a few things that I'm gonna use later, but not enough. Just, just kind of spoiled GD's whole personality and stuff. <laughs> but I think that's cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed it. And you guys have a good day. Firecats 3 out. Thanks for watching.